So the gut, to me, the big mechanism is H. pylori. Now, parasites are big. I mean, you saw my skin, what, six, maybe, I can't keep up with the years, maybe six or seven years ago. My skin was messed up, and it was because I had various gut infections. I do believe parasites are a big contributor, but really, it's hard to pick a smoking gun for the gut because candida, bacterial overgrowth, parasites, they all contribute to the same thing, which is an issue with nutrient absorption. They create this malabsorption problem. But I think H. pylori is one of the big ones for people because of what it's doing with the parietal cells and reducing your stomach acid. Because then what's really happening is you have this domino effect of the H. pylori, then allowing the putrefication of your food, which then creates the overgrowth of even more pathogenic bacteria, which then may allow parasites to thrive because now there's not enough stomach acid to kill them off. So I really do think that H. pylori was one of my big variables for my skin. And I can tell you with confidence that I've seen it in countless, countless teenagers and people in their 20s that are still dealing with acne. If we get rid of H. pylori alone, we may have 60 to 75% improvement in the skin just based on that. And then the question is, well, can you bring in enzymes to help reduce some of the malabsorption? And 99% of the cases, yes. Rarely is there too much inflammation or gut irritation where we don't do enzymes and acids out of the gate. But Really, if I were a dermatologist running a brick and mortar practice, you know what I'd have on my shelf? I'd have digestive enzymes and every client that comes in with skin problems, here's your enzymes and that would fix en it. Enzymes and HCL, as long as there's not so much gastritis or gut irritation, definitely a combination of the two for sure. I 100% agree. And then a good elimination diet plays a big role. Um, these, you know, if you have bags under your eyes, that's called allergic shiners and allergic shiners. They're basically a pool of the lymph under the eye area because there's a lot of lymph in this area. And so lymphatic increase, lymphatic fluid increase is going to happen with inflammation. Think about it. If you bump your head or get in a fight and get a black eye, what happens? There's inflammation and pooling. Well, you're doing that at a, at a micro level when you have inflammation from food and you're going to see it in the eye area because that's where there's a lot of lymph. So if you're having allergic shiners, right? Don't cover it up with makeup. Try to cut out the foods out of the gates. That's going to be a big one out of the gates. Make sure you're consuming enough water. People that have chronically dry skin, it's not a hydration issue. Remember, fats provide a lot of the moisture to your skin to be moist and not overly dry. So if you're having a lot of chronic dry skin, you know, eat, consume good water, right? But also really make sure your fats are up and make sure you're digesting those fats. That's really important. And if you want to topically add some shea butter or some coconut oil to your skin, if it's the winter and you're in a very, really uh, low humidity environment, you know, you may need to topically add a little bit of that too during the, the winter months if it, when it's drier out. So you may want to topically hit it, but you don't want to get into the habit of only doing the topicals because you got to support your skin inside and out. You know, what's amazing now that you mention it like that, when my wife and I first got together, it would be 11 years ago our diet was not like it is today. And every winter, her and I both, we would get really itchy. Our skin would get red. We would get really dry skin. I'm telling you, man, I did not put lotion on, but maybe once this entire winter. And I used to have to do that all the time. How funny is that? Yeah, all I remember the, when I was- We could put the lotion industry out of business with this advice too. Yeah, I mean, you may topically need to add a little bit, but I'll, you'll be able to reduce it 80 to 90%. I remember when I was um, first trying to get healthy, 15, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, I was trying the low fat thing out of the gates. And I remember one winter, my skin was so itchy and dry. And then I remember I came across an article and I started adding in coconut oil and, and olive oil. And I was just doing a tablespoon of a day. And I remember being like, wow, my skin, the dryness just, it, it reduced 80, 90% with just internally adding fats. Cause I'm thinking like, oh, dryness, that just means more water, right? You need more water but you need to be able to carry that water to the skin. And, and the fats provide that kind of support. The fats help bring that hydration to the skin. And so fats for me played a huge role. And I've seen that as well. And of course, with all this fat phobia, the more dry your skin gets, that means the more inflamed is going to get, the more inflamed, the more redness and, and, and potential for other issues are going to happen. So if you don't have enough fats on your skin, that can create this cascade of a lot of other skin issues.